I will start my presentation. Hello, I am Chusun Wan from OpenChat Dev Team. OpenChat Server Team has been putting tremendous efforts to automate the release process, and as a result, we were able to release with just a click. In this session, I will share what we have been thinking about and what we have gained through automation. First, I will explain the OpenChat Server release process problem of the as-is process and the objective we wanted to achieve through automation. Next, explain how we automated each part and the result, and lastly, share our future works. First, I'll briefly explain the release process for OpenChat Server. We release our components weekly. There is a release master who oversees the whole release process for the week, and the members take turns every week. All members participate in release and usually each member is in charge of one to two components and it takes about one to one and a half hours. There are four main steps in the release process. First, we share the beginning of the release to the related developers in chat room. This may be seen as a minor process, but if there is an outage on other storages or servers due to OpenChat server release, it can be an important clue to identify the root cause of the issue. As seen in the picture, we share it to both line open chat chat room and line group chat room. Next, members deploy the component code to the servers and restart. For most of the services in line, we use the in-house tool called PMC for deployment. On PMC UI, we click on deployment button and wait until deployment is completed to all servers. When deployment is completed, we have to click on restart button to restart the servers. After the release of the new codes, we have to monitor to see if there are any unexpected issues to come up. If there's a major issue, we roll back. I will explain more the monitoring process in more detail in the later part. After monitoring, if there's no issue, we share once again to the chat rooms. Likewise, we share to two chat rooms and this is the last step in the release process. Then let's see what the problems were in the ASIS release process. First of all, when releasing, there may be a human mistake. Of course, we take our job very seriously, but humans do make mistakes. In fact, there was once um, where the servers to the whole system went down because we made a mistake and it led to a major failure. Secondly, the release process involved all members, so precious resources were wasted. As service requirements were constantly growing, reducing this waste was also important. Lastly, there are repetitive manual operations in the release process. Then, how many manual operations did we repeat? Currently, the total number of components is 7. Two of the components are the target of Canary release. So we do Canary release of the two first and do an entire release of the servers. For convenience, let's just assume that the cost of performing each operation is the same. And we calculated the number of manual operation for each of the three parts. Uh, we found out that for the seven components and two for the canary release, it required 41 manual operations. And based on the problems, we set the objectives for the automation as this. First, preventing human mistake. Second, reducing human resources required for release. Third, reducing the number of manual operations in the process. From this moment, I will explain how we automated each part. First is about automating sharing. For line open chat, we used a virtual account created by our team and open chat server messaging API. For line group chat room, we used line notify feature provided by line to automate messaging sending. This is how we shared the beginning and the end of the release on line open chat using the bot that we created. And this is sharing in line group chat room using line notify. Next is about automating deployment. PMC provides UI and REST API. So we were able to easily automate using this. First, we called deployment API and checked if the task is finished by polling. 
Here, you can also call the status of task using PMC API. If deployment is completed, call restart API and regularly, we regularly checked for completion. Sharing and deployment was easy to automate. However, monitoring is quite abstract and there are many variables, so it was tricky to automate. Before automating, um, we thought of the usual way for monitoring. Monitoring is divided into two parts. First is monitoring of the system level like layer, like memory, disk, and GC. If there's an issue at system level, all members get email notification. Second is the monitoring of error logs on server layer. We use Kibana provided by the in-house monitoring system called Imon to check the logs for, uh, for ourselves. As you can see, in Imon Kibana, you can check the number of error logs by time and what error logs they are. For automating monitoring, we decided to automate the second part, which we use to manually check error logs. Then, when do we detect the problems during monitoring? First, when there are new error logs we've never seen before after release, we can assume that the error came from the release. Second, when the existing error log increases rapidly, it's another sign of a problem in the service. Based on these, we decided the rules for automating. First, using Imon Elasticsearch API, we collect error logs during specific period. Then we aggregate the number of logs by error type and compare the number of logs before and after release. For instance, let's say that we're collecting error logs from day one to day three. First, we call in the error logs by day using Imon Elasticsearch API. By aggregating the number of logs by date, you can get a sum for the number of errors per type from day one to day three. And then the, these are the results. T is the time of deployment. The one on the left is 10 days prior to T and the right is from T to now. On the right side, there's a new error log. In this case, um, due to the release, a new error popped up. So there is a problem with the release. In this case, there are more errors than the left. The number of errors 10 days before the deployment compared with the right after the release shows that the number of errors have drastically increased. We can also detect that there is a problem with release. Uh, this is the entire flow of automated monitoring. After deployment, we check to see whether there are any new error logs or increase in old error logs. If there's any problem, we share the error log to the team chat room. If none, we check once again after five minutes and we do this three times. And after repeating for three times, if there's no problem, we finish monitoring. This is a screenshot of us sharing the monitoring result in the chat room. And one on the right is sharing a problem after monitoring. We wrote the script for sharing deployment and automating monitoring in Python and integrated into Jenkins job. If you build Jenkins job, the four steps I previously explained will be automatically executed. This is the result of what we got from automation. Now for the weekly release, all the release master has to do is to click the build button in the Jenkins job. Before, human mistakes, involvement of all members, and a total of 41 manual operations were required for the release. But after automating the process, there is no room for human mistakes. Only one release master is required and only one manual operation for the release. Now, team members are free from the burden of release. However, there are still many challenges. First of all, since monitoring is dependent on the error log of Imon, we have to strengthen monitoring to detect problems from various angles. Other than that, there's, if there's a problem, automating rollback, pipelining each step, and introducing interactive bot, bot are future works for us. This is the end of the presentation, but the journey to automating OpenChat server release will be continued. Thank you for listening.